uh, question that was asked. I'm not sure who this man was, but the way he puts the question in together, I think it was so powerful. Uh, Yes. Yeah, yeah. So so the Brunsma lecture, you know, for those of you who don't know, the background is the, the men like Brunsma and Valentines, and there were a few more, they united with a number of Catholics and they were trying to see what Adventists could learn from Catholicism, right? Mm -hmm. There was an outrage from the Adventist church who made videos about it. Elder Ted Wilson called them and said, you can't have this happening at Lumininda University. They moved to a different location. Some people were saying, well, this is still happening. Well, freedom freedom to travel, freedom of speech. They have the right to still communicate their views. But at least Elder Ted Wilson, they check them. And that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Whether he did it for selfish reasons, that's beside the point. <laughs> I mean, the King James Version happened because of selfish reasons, but we still have it in our hands today. But uh, here is the thing. So this question that's going to be asked is, again, regarding some of the things that are being said. And I thought this was a really good question coming from this man. Let's take a listen. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. I have three things. One, I want to appreciate the fact that the presentation has been made and the presenter has aired his own mind in relation to the freedom of, of conscience. That's beautiful. Number two, I wanted to make a follow-up of what my sister asked right here, connected with what my elder, who have served over 50 years, quoting Ellen White in a quotation of 1860-something. In your presentation, do you suggest that we have an opportunity to negotiate about the Sabbath and the sanctuary, the two fundamental principal doctrines of the Seventh-day Adventist Church? Of course, there are others, including the State of the Dead, but mainly those two, which are focused on worship in relation to the Roman Catholic to the Roman Catholic Church who changed one the Sabbath number two the worship in the sanctuary in terms of the ministry or the, the priesthood ministry and they bringing it to the priestly ministry of the Roman Catholic Church do you think in your paper, we need to renegotiate about that. Question two, in your presentation and in your book or paper, do you suggest, or in your presentation, was it meant to a benchmark, was it meant for the Seventh-day Adventist Church to benchmark the Roman Catholic Church, or is it meant for us to borrow something which the Roman Catholic Church do, and then we can be able to borrow from them and then put into practice? Please respond in, in, in the last question, which is a follow-up of what my sister asked. All right. All right. This is huge. Now, I want to quickly go back to what the sister asked. She didn't really get a good answer either. So uh, I want to quickly, quickly go back just to establish the nature of her statement. There she was. I did a video about her. Um, there we go. Let's go back to here. I want you to hear what she asked so that you can understand the value of what he's adding to it. Just briefly, uh, what kind of reexamining do you think needs to be done regarding the Sabbath and the sanctuary. And then I have a more personal question. Why do you yourself identify still as a Seventh-day Adventist? You get it? So before we hear their answers, um, what do you think 
is uh, I mean, tell me what you're thinking about these questions first of all. <laughs> <laughs> so when uh, she looks familiar, by the way, I, I, felt, I think I met she her is. in person. She, at I some think point. she's a doctor. I think. Uh, yes, she's, I believe she's I, definitely connected to Joyce. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and Liberty and Health. I met her in D.C. this summer. But anyways, um, excellent question <laughs> because that's the bottom line, right? So it's like okay. Um, you know, so we're here to to determine, you know, what we can learn from Catholics and and what Catholics can work, learn from Adventists. And I, I think that's the heart of the matter, because I think what the gentleman is was pretty much propo- uh, proposing is that, hey, there is really no big separation between us. We have more in common mm-hmm. than than, you know, than where we disagree. And so we should really come together and 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 hold hands. <laughs> if you are a Seventh-day Adventist, if you understand the history of Seventh-day Adventists, if you understand the history of Protestantism, mm. you know there is no way <laughs> that can be the case. <laughs> this is this listen, if if you if for those who may not be Adventists or may not understand this, this is not an attack on Catholics personally, but you have to study the history of the Protestant Reformation. And then when you understand that, her question is 100% valid. Why, I would add, not only why are you still an Adventist, but why are you, why do you still identify as a Protestant? Because Mm. the word Protestant means to protest. Mm. What were they protesting? The Roman Catholic Catholic Church Church. doctrines, not the people, but specifically their doctrines, their system. Of, mm-hmm. of 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 theology and their teachings, and so here this this gentleman is trying to say, hey, our teachings are not that different, and where there are differences, then we maybe we should hear the Catholics out and and consider their view mm-hmm. is entirely against the views of the Protestants and entirely against uh, Adventism from the historical standpoint. Maybe today modern Adventists may feel differently, but from our, our pioneers and of course the reformers. Absolutely. That's a, a legitimate question. And I would have, I, did he answer it? Did he's he go, answer he's going to answer, okay. uh, but we're going to take a listen to that as well. But yeah. quickly, I agree with what you're saying. Again, I think there is a lack of understanding, maybe a reversion of history happening in order for us to forget what really took place in the Protestant Reformation. I noticed lately, even a lot of evangelicals uh, in, the, in the name of going back to, to the mother, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> the daughter's going back to their mother. There's been a lot of dumbing down the significance of the Protestant movement and right. what happened during that time. They kind of make it look like, well, Martin Luther was just arguing about grace. Really? You think that's what it was? Like he was just, you know, he was just a Martin Luther thing. You know, he was, it was bigger than that. There were a lot yeah. of teachings that were very much controversial. Martin Luther was just one of the many. Um, but also, uh, so there's the act, there's the attack on the on, on the, the the true history of the Protestantism. But there's also uh, another thing that I do noticed throughout the presentation, uh, the Catholics made no concession whatsoever. Yes. It was the, these Adventist, supposed Adventist leaders, they don't speak for me, just saying I don't speak for the church. I just want to make sure I say this. Mm-hmm. These supposed men who claim to be Adventists, they're the ones who are rejecting their teachings to come in align with the Catholic church. Yes. Yes, they're making the compromise, not the other way, or at least it's not neutral. It's, <laughs> it's not. not the, I don't. I don't see the mutual compromise, <laughs> no, here, which is very it. fascinating. Yeah, I don't see it. I know the. I know. I know the language. We don't want to build wall. We want to build bridges, but you the only one building bridges because they just sitting over there. <laughs> I'm waiting for them to have the meeting at I don't know at at, at a Catholic you know forum. And yeah, have the same conversation. I'm, yeah, I'm, and, and maybe it'll happen. I don't know, but yeah, you know. that, that's interesting to me. So anyway. Uh, Let's go back to to the video because uh, we can say so much more. So let's let's take a listen to the rest of his answer. So I think that you answered the question that was asked. Yes. Is there anything additional you want to say in response to this? And this, I think, is going to be, unfortunately, I think our last exchange. Yes. For those of you who can hear what he is saying is, it sounds like this is the same question that she asked that was already answered by Brother Valentine sitting here. And so he's also saying this is the last question that they're going to take and stuff like that. But I want to hear what what the answer is from uh, Mr. Brunsma. I don't know why he's not using his mic. 
and, and, and as you respond, please be keen, as you respond kindly, be keen on the focus of the Church of the Sabbath in relation to the sanctuary and the Sunday law. Thank mm. you. Mm. Well, maybe just one point. It has been uh, actually difficult to the acoustics here at this place in the auditorium are not ideal, I can tell you. So it's, uh, it's difficult to follow all the uh, comments and questions when you're sitting here. Uh, but let me just say that, sure, there are criticisms that we have of Catholicism. And the change of the Sabbath uh, to the Sunday although it is sometimes, uh, the, the process is sometimes explained in a way that is uh, more simple than it actually happened. There are many different factors that, that were part of that. But yes, the Catholic Church played a role in that that we do not appreciate. But the discussion should not only be on whether we celebrate the Lord's Day on the seventh or on the first day. That is a valid point of discussion. But how do we actually celebrate the, uh, the Sabbath? That is sometimes an issue that is snowed under because we are just emphasizing this uh, time factor. And uh, there, Catholics and Protestants can learn from each other and do not have to accuse each other. Uh, about uh, the mistakes that they have made in the past. So, uh, yes, dialogue must go on. Go on. We, we have things that we do not agree with, but there are lots of things we do agree with, and uh, that gives us the opportunity to dialogue. All right. All right, so I want to get a thought on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I feel like I got gas lid for a little bit. All right, go yeah. ahead. <laughs> so, so I guess my initial reaction is that he didn't, he didn't really, he didn't answer the the whole question. No. Um, why is he still at Adventist? And and I don't, I you know. But the point is, so he he addressed the Sabbath issue, and it's interesting because he said yes, the Catholic Church, Church played a role in it. Well, that's not what the Catholic Church says. They they come out very plainly and say, we changed it. It was us. Yeah. We're the ones that, I mean, we literally have the documentation from their own. They've owned it. Archive. <laughs> They've owned it. They changed it. They call it their mark of authority. So that's number one. Um, number two, with all due respect to him, is it, we more than just not appreciate it. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is a system that changed scripture i mean you can't change scripture but you, you they attempted to change the bible which is the very foundation of of all that we believe and and the, the highest authority when it comes to the christian faith and so uh when you go and you you change or add something to the word of god that's not something we merely just you mm -hmm. know, don't appreciate it but that that is something that we vehemently disagree with and oppose and reject and Correct. protest and exactly. So that's, we just don't passively say, ah, we don't appreciate that. That's not really <laughs> cool of you. It's like, whoa, if someone came and told me, you know, uh, Jesus is a woman. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, what? Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm not, my offense is, no, the word of God explicitly states that he was a man. So yeah. you just come in and change the you know, clear word of God. And yeah, this yeah. Is, he's kind of belittling what actually happened mm -hmm, and making mm -hmm. it seem, oh yeah, we don't appreciate that, but let's not focus on the time of the Sabbath, but rather how we worship. Mm. And I'm like, oh, you see that? So now it's no longer important which day, it's how you worship, and now you, you're, you're entering into this idea of, mm. you know, it, it doesn't matter what time and, and when, when God clearly said, remember. So, yeah. And then, of course, he never really answered the question, why is he still Adventist? And so I don't maybe he maybe he didn't hear that part, but he didn't he didn't answer it. So, wow. Yeah. I mean, so good. I 
I was looking for this news article quickly while you were speaking, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, but I can't find it. I have it in my sermons. I just could not find. I just gonna take me a while to find it. But it's just it's a story about uh, a number of young teens who teenagers who just were having fun. It happened in the nineteen hundreds, and they they went out and they were removing stop signs from 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 the end of the roads. And as they were removing the stop signs, goofing around. Um, there were several accidents that happened to the point that um, some couples actually lost their lives. Wow. And then when they went to prison, when they went to see a court and they, they were, they didn't acknowledge the nature of what they've done, you know, cause, and the court had to get them to understand like by removing the signs, you've endangered the lives of individuals because mm. the signs were there for a purpose so yes. that people could identify when it's time to go and it's time to stop. And then it dawned on them that pretty much you were responsible for the deaths of these couples by the action that you took. Yes. So I say that to say this, um, God has given us a sign in his law. Um, you find it in Ezekiel 20, Ezekiel 22, and also Exodus 31 speaks of a sign. And that sign is the Sabbath, is the seal of the living God. The Catholic Church is responsible for removing the sign. And the sign has been removed and has been, another sign has taken over. It's been mm -hmm. a different sign. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are making shipwreck of faith as a result of it. Um, I know God can save men despite their errors and failures. We understand that. Yes. But there are many souls today who will be lost because the signs had been removed. There are some who are deceived and misled. Some of them are still fighting with God, with God's people, because the signs has been removed. I don't think we, we can sugarcoat that. Um, no. And I understand there's still things we can learn from each other. I, 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 I don't have an issue with that. As a matter of fact, I can learn from an atheist. Hmm. That doesn't mean we're going we're gonna to unite. You know, um, but it, I just find it, the concession being made here seems to be more on the part of, the, of, the, of, the, of <laughs> these men who claim to be Adventists and the, the other thing is, um, it's almost like there is this call to be simple, sympathetic to the true history of the Catholic Church. It's one thing you're attacking Catholic people, but the system of the Catholic Church, which the Bible refers to as the Antichrist, mm -hmm. uh, if you do notice what Revelation 13 says, it is the beast with the, in, with the seven heads and ten horns. And the Bible mm -hmm. says, and upon his heads ten crowns, and he was given a name of blasphemy and so on. When you carefully break that down, you you end up with one system. And when you compare that to Daniel chapter 7, you end up with one system. So you can't really sugarcoat this. You can't pacify this. You can't neglect this. As a matter of fact, yeah. you cannot be a Protestant while you're ignoring this. You right. cannot you cannot erase this history. And and also the Catholic Church has never denied their 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 position. Now the truth is they've made some apologies, right? But we are told these apologies is to cover up the record of cruelty. But it's not really, uh, it's a chameleon until he gets what he wants. But it's not really a system that has changed. Could God, uh, do God has some faithful, loving people in a Catholic church? Absolutely. Uh, other sheep that I have, Jesus says, that are not of this fold, them also I will bring, they shall become one fold and one shepherd. So we have no questions and no doubt about that. But when God is talking about a system in and of itself, and the Catholic, the Catholic church has always been that, and, and the, the, the numerous atrocities and certain corruption going on and certain things happening in political systems today that are being overthrown through the Jesuits being mentioned by the Catholic Church and being led about by the Catholic Church. Like, if you were to know how the system works and how deeply entrenched it is in not only political corruption, but foreign relationships and, and the way that is is dealing with different things happening in the church, I don't think any seven events will go back there and try to make concession with Rome. I think it's a right. massive misunderstanding. But again, we are told that only a backsliding church will distant her, her, how does it, as it go? Only a backsliding church will lessen her distance with Rome. So, right. so this goes to show that something is wrong with us when we start thinking that the Catholic Church has changed. Um, yeah. The our reality is it's not the church that has changed. It is us who's changing. And right. this is where we need to stop and check ourselves because... The Catholic Church has been was what exactly what it's always been, and they 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 don't change their ways. So why are we yeah. changing our ways? They're not changing their teachings. Why are we changing ours?
Right. And to the point you just made about, you know, the apologies they've made in the past. Well, no apology, you know, any apology really doesn't matter if there isn't repentance. Correct. And and the word repentance means to change your mind, to change your ways, to, to change the direction you're going in. And so my question is, with those apologies, have they changed their teaching, mm -hmm. their doctrine, what they believe in? And if that hasn't happened, then that's not something that from a biblical standpoint, we can take you know, seriously. And again, we're not attacking individuals. We're talking about the system itself. The, and to, to kind of get away from the Adventist versus Catholicism or Catholic Church, you know, kind of idea, this is not about us versus them. The reason why we protest, the reason why we stand up against it, because this is, they're changing God's law. Mm -hmm. They're changing the word of God. This is, this. if I love Jesus and I love everything that he stands for, which includes his law, his holy law, the law of liberty, then I'm going to have a problem with someone trying to change my king, my Lord's mm -hmm. commandments. Correct. That's just, that's just, if I'm on his side, that's just what it's about. So it's not necessarily about us versus them, Adventists versus Catholics, but it's like we believe in the word of God and everything that's placed in the word of God. Amen. And anyone, whether you're a Catholic or Adventist, by the way, mm -hmm. if you try to come and change that, we're going to have a problem, not with you personally, but what you're saying, and we're gonna we're gonna speak on it and and address it um, as as it should be. So I, it doesn't matter if you're Catholic or you're Adventist a person in my own local church. Correct. We're talk about it. Yep. And it's gonna be called out and addressed. So. That's that's the true spirit of Protestantism. Yeah. Uh, that's just what has to happen. And again, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Yes. Uh, Isaiah 8 verse 20 and also Acts chapter 5 verse 29 tells us that um, that we are to obey God rather than men. Amen. That's not going to change. And that's the true spirit of Protestantism. And you can't do away with that. It's in our hearts. It's in our spirit. And if you read the Bible, one of the most prominent Protestants that I know, which I happen to make him my savior, his name is Jesus. Amen. He, never, he never sugarcoat the truth while he loves men, but he never, he never indulged lies and deception. And Amen. we must not. This is not the time to do this. And I'm hoping we stand strong in these last days.